Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with another secondhand finds haul. Um, like I always say at the start of my videos, I apologise about the lighting again. I've actually got a poor setup. I've got my lamp sat on P's play push chair at the moment just to try and make this okay. It's not okay, but I'm just gonna have to roll with it. Um, I am back again with some more secondhand stuff that I found that I have found recently. Um, what can I say? It just happens. I walk a lot and I walk to different charity shops and I happen to find good stuff. Actually got P some clothes. The first time I have ever brought clothes for P from a charity shop. This jumper is actually from a charity shop. Um, it was from the men's section. It was like vintage. Um, but I've actually got P some stuff. So, without further ado, I'm going to get into it. I'm going to start off with P stuff. And then, obviously, save the books till last. Um, because you might not all be interested in that. I think some of you are. I'll just show you what to expect. I can't even lift it up. Just, just one of these. Just a casual, large Tesco bag for life. Um, so let's get started. So starting with the first thing that I found, it is this puddle suit. I cannot believe I found a puddle suit in a charity shop. This is practically brand new, and this is from Boots Mini Club. Now, P doesn't really have any clothes from Boots. I think they're really expensive. This is in the age two to three, and it was two ninety nine. And as you can see here, it's from the Boots Mini Club. How beautiful is this print? It's like 70s floral. I absolutely love it. Um, it's not as thick as the regatta one that I got her. I got her a regatta one back in October and that's like a snowsuit like lined thick like down in it. This is literally just a puddle suit like a splash suit but I thought it's going to be perfect for I don't even know when she'll go into it like maybe this winter. I, I don't even know if she'll be that big, probably not. But I thought for 2 99 I literally just could not leave it behind. And you can fold it up and put it in this little bag at the back. I just love it. I absolutely love it. So, 2 99 I actually ended up getting all of P's clothes from the same sort of brand. No, not brand. I got them all from Bernardo's. Um, I feel like they price things really well in that charity shop. So the next things I got were some long sleeve tops. Now I can imagine some of you are going to think I'm mental for buying what I brought. But they were 49p each. Um, so I got this standard red one in 2 to 3. Nothing wrong with that. Um, this is from the Boots Mini Club again. Um, so I can't really go wrong with just a plain red tee for like Christmas time. I then got a basic white one. This was from Next, which is why I brought it. Um, it's got like a little bit of embroidery detailing at the top. I don't know if it's going to focus. There we go. Um, it's just a standard white tee. I do have problems washing white things in general. So whether it'll stay white or go grey, I don't know. Um, but again, this was only 49p in size 2 to 3. So I don't know when she'll go into it, but it's just a good staple to have. So I got those two. Then I slightly lost my mind and brought age four to five. But it was next and I couldn't leave it behind. Like how beautiful is this top? Like it's white with mustard flowers on it. Like me and a top. P is going to look absolutely beautiful in this. Like I can just see her wearing it with like a little denim pinafore and tights and brown boots. Like I just bloody love it. Um, so it's one of the ones from Next that come in a three pack. Um, they actually had the other one there but I just didn't like it. It was like a really poo colour yellow. So I left that one. So I've got that one and then the one that went with it as well is just this grey. Albeit it's in size 4 to 5. Um, but it can go in the attic and wait until P's grown into it. Like I just think it was silly to leave like a next t-shirt in for like 49p I just couldn't leave it behind so I just got her a little grey one as well um, again can't go wrong with just like the staple basic colours absolutely love it and there's nothing wrong with it at all so I can't believe I actually got P some charity shop clothes like I've never done it before I've never done it before I am the biggest snob like I'm quite happy to say that I am I am a snob but I'm coming down a bit and I'm not as snobby as what I was so great things and I got a coat. Now, Neil absolutely despises this. My friend Ellie actually pointed this out. She was like, you should get it. Um, 
and I was like oh I'm not too sure um it was a little bit grubby but she helped me clean it like she picked the stuff out of the velcro oh it just makes me feel ill and like cleaned up the pockets for me I still need to wash it I need to wash all of this stuff um but this was from M&S and it was $1.99 let me do it up so you can see it in all of its glory I'm a massive fan on like the fur trim hood I don't really like it but it looks really good on P because of the dark colours. It just really suits her, her skin tone, her hair, everything. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is from m &S. This is really hard to show, I'm sorry. Um, m and 199 um, and it's in the age 18 to 24, so one and a half to two. I was planning on getting her, her a coat in the next mid-season sale um, in age two to three, thinking that was what she was going to be in, but definitely not. So this is probably going to be her winter coat this year when she goes out with the one she's currently in. And then I'll get her another one in the next mid-season um, with my voucher to then have that to go into next, if that makes any sense. But I just think it's so pretty, so autumnal. It's got um, Velcro, which I don't really like because it does get dirty instead of poppers. Um, and then it's got the zip and then it's all like this coral coloured on the inside. I just really like it. Neil hates it. It did have mittens, like there's little buttons here for the mittens, but I threw those in the bin. I didn't really want someone else's hands. I just I just didn't like it, so I just threw those in the bin. But yeah, $1.99 for a coat from MS. Bargain. To a selection of books for P. Um, I found this from Bernardo's. This was 49p and it's a classic. Janet and Alan Allberg, Funny Bones. I've never actually read this book um, but I remember seeing it at like school and all of that and I just thought why not? Like it's just a great classic book. Um, really bright and colourful. I just love it. I couldn't believe I saw it and I was like yes need that. So I think it is quite grown up. She's not going to have it yet. I have put it underneath her bed um, for potential book advent. I'm not too sure. And then I hit the jackpot um, and got a selection of books that I have actually been collecting. Now, a year or so ago, I did a works book haul. Um, and on the works, you can get 10 children's books for £10, which is cheaper in online than it is in store because in store it's like three for five. Um, so definitely go online. Anyway, um, I started collecting these Princess Poppy books, but they had like a really small selection of books. So when I saw these, I could not believe my luck. There were seven in the shop, um, and I left two there because I already had them. Um, but if you don't know what these are, it's basically Princess Poppy. They're quite grown up, so I am going to put these away. Um, but they're just the most beautiful illustrated books ever. Um, so at the start of each page, or at the start of each book, it goes through like what characters are going to be in the book, which I really, really like. And then inside of each book, there is a map which just fills me with so much joy. Look at this. Who doesn't want to live on Honeypot Hill? I just can't get over like how beautiful these books are. Also at the start of each book, there's like a little... Um, envelope as well with a little letter inside which I just I just love these books they're just amazing and I cannot wait for when P's older and we can sit down and read them together and her really get into it so anyway long story short they're just beaut books and I actually found a Christmas one which is gonna go away for a book advent to be fair these will all go away for a book advent but never mind um so we have got Princess Poppy friends together like that one we've got the wedding looks like that one what's this one the party and these are all in such good condition this one which i think P's gonna love which is called puppy love how sweet is that and then finally we've got snowflake which is the christmas one you can see at the back the collection of them all so we've now got quite a few but i couldn't believe that i actually found them in the charity shop so i was really happy to find those so Oh, they just fill me with so much joy. Finally, for P, I picked up a couple of DVDs. Now, I wasn't intending on getting three, um, but it was 75p each or three for a pound, so I just thought, sod it. I may as well pay a little bit extra. So the first one I saw was Finding Nemo. Like, I think I put in my last one, Brave, so a Disney Pixar. Obviously, this is a classic. I bloody loved this growing up. I don't actually have it on DVD. I own it on VHS. That's how old 
I am and how old this film is like it's crazy then I found a Peppa Pig didn't really need it because to be fair I always just find it on YouTube but I was struggling to find something and I was getting in the way of people and I got flustered and I just thought Peppa Pig P knows what it is so yeah we just got that um, and this one is Champion Daddy Pig. And finally, I got Bambi 2. Now, I've never seen Bambi, um, but I don't know. It's got animals in it. It's got like a rabbit and I think it's a skunk and an owl. I'm not too sure. Let me know in the comments if you've read this. Um, if you've read? No, if you've watched this DVD. Let me know your thoughts. It's Disney. It can't be that bad, can it? So I picked that one up as well. So I've got three for a pound can't really grumble at that i also got myself a puzzle when i got the princess poppy books got myself a was jig obviously um it was two pounds fifty but it's currently in the attic because it's it's something i don't like to talk about at the moment um it was sealed and brought it home opened it just to sort of check the condition of the actual puzzle pieces um to see that it was written on the inside of the box one piece missing and it also had a picture of the end puzzle but with was jigs you don't know what you're making so i've basically seen what it's going to be and it's missing a puzzle piece i didn't want to take it back to charity because I, f I felt bad asking for money back for something um so it's in the attic i did buy myself a puzzle but it's not complete anyway let's move on shall we to the books i I can't believe how many books I've brought again. Like, it's just absolutely insane. I didn't think I brought that many, but I did. Okay, where to start? Starting off, I picked something up that is so not like my style at all. But I see it all over BookTube. I watch a lot of BookTubers and everyone raves about the series. And it's like between Harry Potter and this series being their top favourite. And I tried to get into it and I couldn't. But I'm going to try it again this year. And that is the City of Bones series by Cassandra Clare. This is book five. I currently own one, two, three. Now this one, five and seven. So it's a really big series. Um, but it's in immaculate condition. Like it's pretty, I think it's brand new. Like the spine's not cracked at all. And I thought for a pound, which is how much it was, I couldn't leave it behind in case I do get into the series. So like I said, I've got the first three books. Um, I'm going to reread the first and then try and get into the second and carry on. I couldn't get into it last time. So this is a really weird series. It's basically about... I can't even remember what they're called, like shadow hunters or something. So you can tell this is not me at all. But everyone talks about it. So it's about these shadow hunters and they like fight demons and I don't even know. Like it's weird, but I want to jump on the bandwagon. Like it must be good for her to be like the one of the best selling authors um of this time at the moment. Um let me know if you've read this series, if I need to continue with it. It's something I want to do, but because it's such a big series and because I didn't really like the first book and I didn't really understand it, it's sort of holding me back a little bit. Um, so yeah, I got this one, which is City of the Lost Souls. Um, so it was quite a rare find as well. I never actually seen them in charity shops. Picked up A Jenny Colgan. This is quite a small book. Um, Welcome to the Little School by the Sea. Um, I've been collecting Jenny Colgan books. This is her writing as Jane Beaton, I think. Yes. Um, this was a pound. Um, I just thought it was really pretty and I enjoyed the Jenny Colgan book that I have read. So I thought, can't leave that behind. Obviously not. What else have I got? I've got a Jane Green, Mr. Maybe. One of my viewers, I want to say her name's Molly. I apologise if that's wrong. Um, raved about Jane Green and since then I've been collecting the books. But one of the ones she told me were to, to get was Mr. Maybe. So I've got it. Um, so this is going to be on the higher end of my TBR, my never ending TBR. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, I will also turn it round so you can read the back and pause it. Um, I think it sounds good. I just need to prioritise reading authors that I haven't read before and put that higher up. But this was a pound, I believe. Um, so really happy I've got that one finally. I hit the absolute jackpot in one charity shop not too long ago and I ended up getting five in one shop and these are the ones that I got. I actually put an Instagram picture online 
Um, so the first one I've got is Caroline Roberts, The Cozy Christmas Chocolate Shop. I couldn't leave this behind. I've got two of her books before. I'm currently on the hunt for The Cozy Tea Shop in the Castle because a couple of girls from the book club um, have read it and they really enjoyed it. So I want to read that one first because um, then I've got the Christmas version of that. Um, but yeah, this just sounds like a really good Christmas chiclet book. Um, the chocolate shop is based by the sea in the winter time. I think it sounds like a really good Christmassy read. I'll probably read it in like August knowing me. But I'm really happy that I managed to get another book by Caroline Roberts. Let me know if you've read any of her books, what you think. Then I got three by Rainbow Rowell. Rainbow Rowell is a weird author. I read Fangirl last year and I enjoyed it. But like I, I never had like those amazing feels from it. And then when I saw three in the same charity shop right next to each other, I was like, well, I can't leave them behind because obviously they've been donated by the same person. They must have enjoyed them and I can't leave them behind. Like they're, they're a family. So I brought them all. Um, so we've got Eleanor and Park, which I hear loads of great things about. If it's set in the 80s, which is why I haven't read it. Um, but it's basically about this girl called Eleanor who is new sort of to the area. And then she meets this guy called Park on a bus. And if they sort of find the common interest of music and then that's how they sort of fall in love and all of that. It's just a generic, like, I think it's like a young adult contemporary. Um, so that's what it looks like. Um, I am happy I finally have it on my shelf. Um, because I hear loads of great things about it and I love the cover, I love that it's lime green. The next one I have is Landline. Um, not really feeling this one but I couldn't leave it behind obviously because I'm a nutter. Read the back, see what you think. As far as time machines go, Magic Telephone is pretty useless. TV writer Georgie McCall can't visit the past, all she can do is call it and hope it picks up. Is she going crazy or is this a chance to make things right with her husband, Neil? Maybe she can fix the things in their past that seem unfixable in the present. Maybe the stupid phone is giving her a chance to start over, if that's what she wants. Heart-wrenching and hilarious take on fate, time, television and true love. Landline asks if two people are really on the same path or whether love just means finding someone who will keep meeting you halfway. Like, it just sounds weird. I'm going to give it a go. God knows when. But pick that one up. All of these were a pound, by the way. And the final one by Rainbow Rowell is this one. And this is Attachments. This is set in 1999. And it's basically about these two women called Beth and Jennifer who, like, email each other and they chat amongst emails. And then there's this guy who's an IT technician and he, like, monitors stuff that's going on. And he reads their emails. And he ends up getting close to the women and sort of falling in love with them. Um, but I just think it sounds really cool and really interesting. And then like literally the find of the century for me was this some kind of wonderful by giovanna fletcher this was her new release i believe this was out in november um and i wanted to pre-order it and all of that because i love her books but she released it in hardback and i hate hardback books yes okay i brought it in hardback but it was only 150 um and she hasn't released a date for publishing it in paperback. I hate it when authors do this and do it in hardback. It really gets on my wick. Um, cover's beautiful for a start. I think she released maybe like the first chapter or so and I read it um, before it got released and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm really excited to um, read this. I will read the blurb for you so you can get a feel. Izzy and Ian have been a couple since the first week of university. Now celebrating a decade together, everyone thinks they're about to get engaged. Instead, a romantic escape to Dubai leaves Lizzie with no ring, no fiancé and no future. Lizzie is heartbroken, but through the tears she sees an opportunity. This is her moment to discover what she's been missing while playing Ian's ideal of better half. But how much has Ian changed her and who should she be without him? Determined to discover who she is at heart, Lizzie sets out to rediscover the girl she was before and in the meantime have a little bit of fun. So it just sounds like a really nice, light, easy breezy read, which is what all the Giovanna Fletcher books that I've read are. I can't believe I found it for £1.50. Like, I literally pretty much wet myself in the shop. That's how sad I am. I need to get out more and not go to charity shops. But this is the reason I go to charity shops. So I'm really, really happy that I found this one. Let me know if you've read it. What about this one? I've got another Jenny. Um, Operation Sunshine. Again, adding it to the collection. I was trying to find it in the new cover and I've never come across it. So when I came across this for 50p, I thought, why not add it to the shelf? Here we go, so I'll turn that around so you can pause it and read it and see what you think. 
a couple of books from sort of like standalone authors. So the first one is by Ali McNamara. I've shown a couple of her books before. I don't know where they are on my shelves anymore. They move around bloody weekly. This is from Notting Hill to New York, actually. This is basically about a girl who's got a boyfriend who's always away on business. Um, and she gets the opportunity to go to New York and visit her best friend. And it's about them going to New York. I love books set in New York. I just have a thing for it. I'd love to go myself, but... I don't know when we'll ever be able to. But yeah, I'm just really happy I found this. It was only 50p. So that is what that one looks like. And then the other one, this is 25p. And this is by Gail Foreman. Now I thought this was the um, second book of If I Stay, which is the film that I want to say, was it Chloe Grace Moretz was in it? I'm not too sure. Um, but it's not. This was a Zoella Book Club book but the cover was redesigned. It was a purple book, I just hit myself in the face. Um, it was a purple cover for the book club and she recommended it. So now I've got it. I didn't realise that's what it was, but it was 25p and it's called I Was Here. Um, I do see Gail Foreman around quite a lot and I know she's got quite a lot of hype. Um, she's more young adult, I think, as opposed to say, I don't know, um, Gi no, I don't really know Giovanna Fletcher. I'd say she's a young adult as well. Let's say, uh, Millie Johnson, for example, there you go, as a spoiler as to what's to come. Um, yes, yeah, so I think she's more of like the young adult scale, but picked it up anyway. Saved all my favourites till last, so I don't really know where to start. Let's start with this one Jill Mansell. I've got one more to go until I've got every single Jill Mansell book. <sighs> got issues. This is Millie's Fling. This is a hefty book. Couldn't believe I found it the other day, it was 50p. Um, again, had an adrenaline rush when I found it. When Millie Brady saves all her heart's life, she doesn't realise how drastically it will change on her own. Not least because the boyfriend who was asking her to move in with him at the time promptly storms off in a huff. Actually, Millie's relieved. She's quite happy to enjoy a restful, man-free summer in Cornwall. But best-selling novelist Orla has other ideas. She's determined for her own reasons that Millie should meet the man of her dreams. Dropped wallets, roller skating gorillagrams and the world's most flirtatious boss and helicopter in the back garden all conspire to produce a, produce a summer neither Millie nor Orla will ever forget. Bloody hell that was hard for me to read. Sounds interesting, it's a Jill, added to the collection, one more to go. I'm after Kiss I think. I got my last Millie Johnson, I own them all, all of them, I got them all. Can't believe it. This was 25p. I could not believe it when I found this. Um, it's not really much more I can say. Like, I'm just a, an excessive hoarder. Um, this, I'm not even going to read this one because I've got so many more to show you and this video is going to be God knows how long. So I'm going to put it there and you can pause it, see what you think. Let me know if you've read a Millie Johnson. I'm currently reading one at the moment. It's so good. Really, really, really like it. Um, so I've got that one and found two Lucy Diamonds. got this one for a pound, I got this one for 125 which is more than I would pay, but I'm desperate to finish the collection. So we've got Over You, which says, Josie, Nell and Lisa go back a long way. They were, they were flatmates, soulmates and best mates back in their 20s when life was one long party. Five years later, things are different. Josie is married with kids. In deeper suburbia, free spirit Nell has travelled the world and Lisa is on a path to career glory and a salary premiership. A reunion weekend in London seems a great idea to Josie until, until she discovers something which threatens to blow her happy marriage apart. So I just love Lucy Diamond books, so that's why I got that one. And then I got The Beach Cafe, which is quite a large one. A couple of girls from book club have read this, so I obviously wanted it. I wanted it anyway. The premise of this book is that there's this girl called Evie and she's just sort of floating through life, trying to figure out her niche and what she wants to do and trying loads of different things and nothing working out. And then she inherits a cafe. Um, in Cornwall and it's just the story um, so I'm really excited to read that one I'll probably read that one in the summer and then my final two books which are probably just excitement on the same scale first one is I Heart Forever this is the Lindsay Kelk's newest publication I believe it's the final book in her series I always talk about this series on my channel I absolutely love it um, I'm not going to read the blurb because I don't want spoilers for the rest of the series that I haven't even completed yet I found this for a pound. Could not believe that I found it. Um, it's like brand new condition. Spine's not cracked. It just, 
I just couldn't believe that I found this. Um, so yes, just all the feels. And then finally, if you watch me, you know one of my biggest obsessions is Carol Matthews. I love her books so much. I found it. I found the last book. In the last seven months that I've discovered her, I've never found this book. Um, and I found it. So it's got like a little bit of damage on the cover here. Um, it's like slightly water damaged, but I couldn't leave it behind. Um, I just... I couldn't believe it. The fan has the voice of an angel, but as an underpaid barmaid and pub singer, she is going nowhere fast. Then she enters the TV talent show, Fame Game, which could be her big break, but things are never that simple. Evan David's exquisite tones have enthralled opera buffs throughout the world. Everyone around him ponders to his every need, but what he really needs is now some space from everything. Two worlds collide when Fern becomes Evan's assistant and neither are prepared for the dramatic effect they have on each other. Something happens when they get together and it's more than just music. So it's just your chick lit about music. Like, I'm just happy that I found it. So, answer the questions I've asked in the videos. I literally don't even know what I've asked in this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you've read. Again, let me know what you recommend. Um, let me know if you find anything good in a charity shop. I love chatting about charity shop stuff. We always take pictures on Book Club being like, look what we found today. So if you want to find some good stuff, send me a picture and we can chat about it. I'm on the hunt for Kath Kidston. That's my next thing is trying to find like Kath Kidston or Emma Bridgewater mugs. Haven't been successful so far, but hopefully I will. So let's hope that in the next video I'll have one of those things. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm sorry this was really long. Hope you had a good cup of tea while you were watching this. And I'll see you all in my next video.